Hi, George here. Today I want to talk to you about fire by friction with the bow drill, and in particular three major mistakes that are often the reason that people can't get their first ember or can't be reliable with it. And at the end of this video I want to talk about a few tips in terms of actually training the skill and taking your bow drill to the next level. So let's get on with it. So, the bow drill, what is it? Nah, I'm just kidding, we're not gonna do that. Uh, there are loads of tutorials out there online already and I will link to a few good ones in the description below, but I've got no intention of making another one. This video is just to draw your attention to three key mistakes that a lot of people make and it prevents them from being able to make fire reliably. It may be that just by being aware of these few principles, it'll be all it takes for you to be able to get your embers reliably, or if you haven't created one yet, to get your first ember. And, and that's, a, that's a good moment, that. A very primal feeling, trust me. Right, so mistake number one is about component sizes. A lot of tutorials you'll find online or in books, they'll all tell you to make, say, a spindle of X centimetres long and a half board, maybe half an inch or whatever. And that's all very well, it might work fine. But a bow drill kit will typically work much better if it's made to fit you. Put simply, a long chunky spindle will be much harder for someone who's smaller. And equally, a small, delicate spindle will burn through too quickly and just be fiddly for someone who's larger. Too big or too small for your body size is essentially just going to make it harder. Experiment around, try different things, and you'll soon work out what works for you. So aim to make the bow drill spindle about the thickness of your thumb joint. That seems to work well. I made mine way too thick for years and made it much harder on myself. Um, ironically, I did the complete opposite with my hand drills and made those too thin. Equally though, if you do make your bow drill spindles too thin, it'll burn straight through the half board too quickly. At the same time, also try to make it long. About sort of span thumb to finger, that seems to work well. The small ones, they're just fiddly and annoying. Make it easy on yourself. As with all skills and crafts, try to make the kit a work of art and it'll do much better. Symmetry and good craftsmanship tends to lead to better efficiency. Here's a tip I'll give you for free, a bonus one if you like. Have your tinder bundle ready before you start tying yourself out in the bow drill. It sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people finish and get an ember and then have nothing to put it into. <laughs> So the second major mistake is to do a technique. There's two things to think about here, stability and then also the positioning of the spindle. So in terms of stability, there's plenty of stances I've seen work, uh, but the important thing is that this hand, the hand which is holding the bearing block, that needs to be braced really stable. So the best way, in my opinion, to do it is to have the crook of the wrist sitting neatly against the shin here. It sits in really neatly and makes it really, really stable. It's this wrist to shin contact where all the stability of the system comes from. And if you don't have that, it's really, really hard to do. Even though you do quite often see in survival shows and stuff them doing it sort of out over here. Or whatever weird things, which you do wonder whether they ever actually make it or whether the fire is just lit afterwards. But yeah, it's that shin to wrist here. The second thing is perpendicularity of the spindle. So if your spindle keeps popping out of the half board as you're going, that might be why. The giveaway is when you look at the half board, so this one's fine, but if you look on the other side, you can see how the holes have slanted out, and that's kind of the giveaway. It shows you that your spindle's not directly upright, and then it pops out. This spindle needs to be directly perpendicular to the half board. Uh, what you can do is just shift your foot back and forth, and then gradually you can work out exactly what it is. It's quite hard to see from above, so looking from the side you can see that it's directly perpendicular, and then once it is, it's just all about keeping the wrist in place, um, which again obviously just comes down to stability of the wrist-shin contact. Um, but yeah, I can't stress how important that stability is. The third mistake is to do with how you actually approach using the bow drill. I think with the bow drill, instinctively try to go for as much pressure and as fast as possible. But that's actually a bit counterintuitive because by going fast you end up with shorter strokes and at the end of each stroke you end up with a bit of cooling where the spindle stops turning and then starts going the other way. So overall you get more cooling, it also ties you out much faster and at the same time you're likely to the whole kit is going to fly apart, you need to get the spindle spinning off and your technique just falls apart. It doesn't need to be fast, long, smooth, consistent strokes are much better than short and sharp. And I was just holding the bow at the back end rather than the middle because you can get much longer strokes that way. So perhaps the biggest advice I could give you if you're new to the bow drill is don't try to apply too much pressure. Just keep the spindle upright and keep your technique all in place, long strokes, and just bear down with your body weight. There's no need to give more than that to begin with, especially when warming the kit up attitude and almost the intent with which you do it goes a long way with earth skills so you need to respect the process and be fully present in everything you're doing all the way from making the kit to actually getting the amber and then coaxing that into flame 
That way you won't be tempted to take shortcuts and the whole thing will work smoothly and efficiently the first time around. Friction fire lighting, trying to see it as a chore. If you think about it, it's actually a pretty incredible phenomenon that you're making work. And it's about as ancestral skill as we have as a species. And so enjoy it and be proud of that heritage. So before I get carried away with that, let's get on to the last part of the video. How to actually train the skill and take the bow drill to the next level. So I'm going to give you four tips, um, which I think are really valuable in terms of actually training the skill. Uh, all of them are applicable for hand drill as well, if that's what you're up to. So first things first, make sure you train the entire process. Too many people, myself included, I'm guilty, only train the ember stage. You've got to make sure that you train the blowing into flame part as well, and especially the finding and preparing tinder that will work. An ember won't help you if you can't actually get the fire. So the second tip is, well, drill it. It's bow drill is very much a muscle memory thing. You know, at first it feels, well, can feel very awkward and uncomfortable and quite difficult as well. But over time it becomes, particularly with dry kit anyway, really quite effortless and very fast. So the best advice that I was ever given for training the bow drill was to just keep going until you burn the entire way through the half ball. And every time you see smoke, slow down a bit. You don't want to get an ember. The idea being just to purely drill the technique and literally burn the entire way through the half ball. It can tell you a lot. Well, first of all, it's just really good for practicing the muscle memory, but it can also tell you a lot about your drilling by looking at the hole that you end up with. And as we talked about before, be really careful about making sure the uh, spindle is directly perpendicular. You can see this in how the hole is being borne in, whether it's going in an angle or straight down. Any of you that are familiar with Tom Brown will have probably heard about his story, how he learnt on green oak. He was told that green oak is the best thing to learn on, thinking, of course, oh, I'll get fire quickly with that way. But the real reason that he was told to practice on green oak is because you'll never get fire with green oak, but it means that you will spent hours and hours drilling the technique until it's so natural that as soon as you try something that will work, you get it immediately. As with most skill-based practices, little and often is by far the best way to train it. And so yeah, that's tip number three, little and often. When I was in my second year of university, I would, there was a time when I would go every single morning, and it wouldn't take long, but I'd make two embers on bow drill and one on hand drill, and it improved my reliability no end. It's particularly important for hand drill if you're doing that, just because it allows the hands to harden up as well. If you try to do sessions for too long, you'll just get blisters and you practice over for a month or a week or whatever. So tip number four is for when you're already getting embers reliably. As with all skills, and particularly those of survival where it's a necessity, you've got to be able to deal with non-ideal situations. So start introducing new variables and practicing and sort of streamlining your technique in non-ideal situations. So with bow drill that means looking at using different woods, using different, doing it in different weather, doing it in the dark, doing it in the wet and the rain, um, doing it with your non-dominant hand is important. Most people can do it with their dominant hand but can't do it with their non, including me. Um, even blindfolded and all sorts of things, just for any eventuality. Uh, so it's a skill that can be infinitely complex and difficult and there's always another level to reach. So that's pretty much it for today. The last bit of advice I want to give you is enjoy it. You know, it's an extremely ancestral skill that's often surrounded by a lot of myths in indigenous cultures. Many people describe it as extremely spiritual, almost a connection with our ancestors. At any rate, it's extremely satisfying. If you enjoyed this video, please do share and subscribe. Um, if you're on YouTube, do check out the blog. There's a link in the description below. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video.